Information processing is a very technical subject, and there are many factors to consider when approaching this course. The new information processing syllabus will be implemented in January 2021, and there are a few important changes which you'll need to keep in mind. A student book and a lecturer guide are available with lots of valuable information to help students and lecturers. The core of information processing is to key in documents accurately. When working in the industry, an important document cannot be sent to a firm containing accuracy errors and not looking neat. The changes in the curriculum largely concern a change in terminology and the introduction of newer technologies and devices related to information processing. Keying in replaces typing. Proofreading signs replaces manuscript signs. People no longer use typewriters to process data. Because we use computers, students will be instructed to key in a document instead of typing out a document. Terms such as typing technique and touch typing still apply, however. The list of proofreading signs have also been updated and include more functions which students need to use in Microsoft Word. Let's have a look. There is a new module, Module 2, called Initial Instructions, Proofreading Signs and Keying in Rules. This new module will help students understand what the difference is between hardware and software, as well as understand the screen layout of a Microsoft Word document. Other functions and skills which are covered include how to save a new document, the find and replace function, as well as use of footnotes, endnotes, and symbols among many other functions. Students can refer to this module whenever they are unsure about how to save a document or use certain functions in MS Word. The Future Manager's textbooks include the keying in rules, which must be adhered to, especially when tests and exams will be marked. These rules aim to standardise the marking process so that it's fair to all students. The keying in rules explain the display errors in detail and what it means when something is marked as an accuracy error or a display error. An information processing lecturer must go through these rules thoroughly with the students and explain the rules to his or her class so that they know what to look out for when completing the exercises. The layout of the books follow the new curriculum exactly as it is set out. If you compare the contents of the book with the curriculum, they correlate 100%, which makes it easy to follow. The books start off by giving a good, elaborate explanation of what information processing is, how examinations are structured, and how marks will be allocated. Keyboard proficiency is one of the most important aspects of information processing. All students taking the subject must be able to key in documents quickly and accurately. At N4 level, students need to master the skill of blind typing or touch typing, that is keying in without using sight and relying on muscle memory. Students need to know the layout of the keyboard and where the keys are allocated by heart. All 10 fingers must be used while keying in a document. The correct sitting posture, hand position and keyboard skills are very important. Here's a tip. Students should time themselves in class and make use of a stopwatch or timer so that they get used to working with time constraints, increasing speed and don't waste time and lose marks unnecessarily. The Future Manager's textbooks include examples of programs which would be beneficial and enjoyable for your students. Students cannot use or rely solely on keying in programs to master the keyboard. If students use a keying in program, they will struggle with the exercises. From day one, students need to keep their eyes on the textbook or exam paper and not on the screen or their hands. Internet applications can be used as additional resources to practice keyboard proficiency. Speed and accuracy tests must be practiced daily. Sometimes when students do a speed or timed accuracy test, they don't reach the required speed for N4 level, which is 35 words per minute. The Future Manager's textbooks include a simple method students can use to roughly calculate their words per minute when they do not finish a timed accuracy test. The marking table has been included to show how timed accuracy tests should be marked. This will help students understand the way they are evaluated because timed accuracy tests are marked differently. 
this table works like a scale, indicating how marks will be lost for various errors. Several clear print screens and images are included to demonstrate how to execute functions step by step. There are a few basic settings which all students are advised to set up before they start to key in any documents. These settings will make it easier to see line spacing, letter spacing, tab stops, etc., and will prevent students from losing unnecessary marks in tests or exams. Each module explains the content of the module and has a few activities to practice what has been explained and what students should be able to do in the national exam. There are certain weightings and teaching hours per section allocated to modules in the revised curriculum. These weightings or hours are a good indication of which modules are more important and which should be practiced more. This is what the new weightings per module look like. The higher the weighting or hours allocated, the more likely it is that those modules will be in the national examination. Take a look at older question papers and you'll note that these are the sections examined more frequently. Useful addenda are included at the back of the textbooks to make the student book and lecturer guide more user-friendly and to make referencing easier. Note how this includes shortcut keys which help students to work faster. For example, if a document needs to be printed, instead of leaving the keyboard, taking hold of the mouse, clicking on the file, clicking on and selecting the print function, using the shortcut keys will save time. An addendum which explains how marks are allocated is also included, which makes it clearer for students to see how marks are awarded or deducted. This is extremely important. Students need to know how marking is done before they do their first test. Careful attention needs to be paid to understand marking. An example of a marking table is inserted to show students and lecturers how manipulation or display errors will be grouped. Note that a student cannot be penalized for the same error twice. Some of the manipulation errors are grouped together and a student can only lose two marks for errors grouped together. Lecturers who teach information processing must be passionate and enthusiastic about the subject. Students can easily get zero marks for a test and fail the subject, so you must provide guidance as to which mistakes to avoid, advise how marking is done, and familiarize students with the keyboard with the aim of working quickly and accurately. Students need to understand the subject and its terminology. When students work on an exercise in class, Allocate a time frame within which they should complete the activity and let them print it. Go through the memo of that exercise thoroughly and allow students to mark their own work or to swap with a classmate. Lecturers should be very strict from the beginning. When students start with mastering the keyboard, they should be strict and see to it that students practice without looking at their hands. While students are busy with the keyboard mastery lessons, the lecturer should walk around and see that students maintain the correct posture and hand positions. Students need to know the keyboard and layout by heart. Lecturers should also be very passionate and motivate students every day, while students should focus on accuracy from the start. Here are some tips to remember when coaching your students. Students must practice daily, master touch typing, time themselves, focus on accuracy, read carefully, key in what is given, and not add or leave anything out. They should swap exercises in class and get familiar with making mistakes. Know the correct terminology and proofreading signs, and understand the marking guidelines. Here's a summary of tips for lecturers. Be passionate and motivate your students. Be strict about timing and accuracy from day one. Emphasize the keying in rules and proofreading signs. Time your students in class. Encourage them to do the same when practicing and completing exercises. Stress the importance of keyboard mastery and touch typing techniques. Help students recognize display and accuracy errors by working through test and exercise memos and allowing students to swap and mark each other's work.